Hey, g'day there, Craig from Kickass. And lately I've had a few questions on how our watt meter is connected properly and how to understand all the readings. So let's take a quick squiz at one of my favourite Kickass gadgets, the watt meter. You ripper. Okay, let's take a bit of a tour of the watt meter. Now, on the right hand side, I have the source or the input. So that's where you're going to get your power to come from. Then I have the load side on the left. Now that is connected to your battery or whatever is using the power. So that's where some people get confused. Now, next up we have on the top right hand side, we have the amount of amps that's going through the system. And on the top left, we have the voltage. Now, down the bottom here on the right-hand side, we have the data scroll. So the data scroll is all time-based, and that's why it keeps scrolling through. So first off, you'll get your amp hour, which is your total amount of amps. Then you'll get your VM, which is your minimum amount of voltage the system has encountered. Then you have your kilowatt hours. You have your amp peak and your watt peak. And once again, then you have the time that it's all been functioning for. And last but not least, the bottom left-hand corner, we have the amount of watts. So let's take a look at how to connect the watt meter. Now, first off, you have your source side and you have your load side. Now, if we look at it, the source side is always going to be where your power is coming from. And the load is always going to be where your power is going to. So for instance, say we want to check out a solar panel. Our solar panel is going to be our source and our load is then going to be connected up through the regulator to the battery and that's going to tell us what the load is doing. So there you have it. The source is the input and the load is the output. Okay, here's another example for you. Say we want to check out what a fridge is using or maybe an oven, a set of lights or a water pump, anything you want to see what's going on. So the battery would then be your source and the load is whatever device you're using, say your fridge. So you connect your battery to the source and you connect your fridge to the load and that way you can determine what your device is using. You ripper! So if you hook the watt meter up wrong, don't panic, you won't hurt anything. The only thing you'll notice is that only the voltage will be displayed and there'll be no other measurements there. So all you need to do is swap it around and Bob's your uncle. So if you go to check your watt meter after a few days and notice there's a bar across the screen or the screen has frozen, then what's happened is the unit has used up all its internal memory and therefore you need to disconnect it and connect it back up again and start doing your readings again. Well, there you have my little rundown on how to use the watt meter. And hopefully I've answered a few of those questions I've been getting because they are absolutely fantastic and a great tool. So thank you very much for watching the video and don't forget if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments.